Hey there guys, so it's a long time coming, but I'm finally going to show you how to create uh, an image like this with a layered uh, meteor shower. So this is actually multiple shots, it took over the entire night. And I'm going to flip over to Photoshop, and I have a few of the brightest meteors that I caught that night. Um, just opened up as layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these layers using shift click to select them all. This only works in CS6. Uh, if you're anything earlier, you have to do them individually. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is switch the blending mode of the layers to lighten. And it's kind of the same thing we do with uh, star trails. And what you can see is only the lightest parts of the image show through. So you can see all the different meteors. And you can see they don't line up very well. They kind of seem to go in random directions. And I can demonstrate why this happens um, in a program called Starry Nights. And this is kind of a, a astro or planetarium program. And I can scroll through the night. You can see I've got the radiant of the Perseids meteor shower selected here for that night. And if I go through the night, you can see how the radiant changes throughout the night. And this is why you're seeing those change. So to correct that, uh, what we need to do is actually rotate each of these into the correct position based on one of the images we select. So I'm going to, well first off we need to figure out where to rotate them from. Because if I go and select just this layer and I go to free transform. Now if I just use the rotate, what's going to happen is it's going to rotate based on this center point. So I'm going to undo that. Um, so what I need to do, because I don't want it just rotating at the center of the image, I need it actually rotating based on Polaris or really close to that. So if I zoom in here, you can see where so this is actually Polaris right here. Polaris isn't exactly north. Um, you can see this right here is pretty much the center. So what I need to do is base everything on that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my oops, I'm going to come to my uh, custom shape tool, and I'm just going to place this target shape. It doesn't really matter what you put here, but I'm just going to pick this and I'm going to shift click to keep it its shape. And then I'm just going to move this into position so it's centered perfectly. Uh, not perfectly, but pretty close. So now I've got that shape to reference off of. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all these layers. So I decided to use this one as my base layer, and that was because the radiant of Perseids was up in this corner at that time of the night. So you can see in the final image, everything's pretty much radiating from this general area. So from there, if I turn on this top layer, you can see we actually have two meteors in this image. So if I select this layer and then come to free transform and what I'm going to do is drag this center point on top of this target. So that changes where that layer rotates from. So now if I rotate this you can see it's rotating from that point. But now what we're looking for is where the stars align. And it can be kind of hard to spot, but if you generally get these into the position they need to be in, because we know the radiance up there, and now you can see when those stars get kind of close. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, the lens distortion is going to affect it so they don't line up perfectly, but get pretty close. Right about there looks pretty good. And then I am just going to finish that transform. And now those are aligned. 
um, what you do from there is you can create a layer mask. Um, what I'm going to do is actually create a reverse layer max mask. If I alt click, or I think it's command click on Mac, that is going to hide this entire layer. And I just need to remember where that meteor was. So now I'm going to switch over to my brush tool uh, using white as my foreground layer to reveal that meteor. And I just need to find it. Yeah, do that, and then I can just brush this meteor in. And of course, I would get more detail to actually get rid of the extra stars that came along. But you get the idea. And then I had another one up here somewhere. There it is. So I'll just undo that and then brush that in. And what that did is got rid of all the other stars. Because if I if I shift click on this to hide that layer mask, you see if we didn't do that, we'd have all these extra stars out there. So I'll turn that back on. And that's really it. You just got to follow the same process through each one. So I'll turn this layer on and go to free transform. Move this center point there. And then rotate until it gets kind of close to where I think the radiant should be. Zoom in a little bit. Try to get those stars to align. Sometimes it can be challenging. But eventually you kind of see it. There it is. You just see when they start to align. I'll finish that. I will zoom in on the meteor first, create a reverse layer mask, and then brush that in. So you just keep repeating that over and over. Uh, once you're done, flatten the image, and that's really it. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, this one's pretty easy because we have Polaris in the image uh, with the like the Geminid shower, for instance, I was pointing west, I believe, and you know you don't have that reference to use. So I ended up just guessing based on where the radiant was and just kind of rotating them into position so it's not as accurate as this one is, but I didn't have much of a choice in that instance, so um, works a lot better when you're pointing north. Uh, I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.